takes us to here with the single strike ocean fear alongside the tornadoes and then you've got the flutterman as well not to mention the glamora that can be a pain and it's all right if you don't approach it correctly yeah, well, it is going to be that Tornadus and Single Strike. Urshifu there coming out for Mark. Porygon 2 and Incineroar coming out for Eric. And Porygon 2 is going to get that boost to its special attack thanks to download. That is exactly what Eric wants to see. It can, if getting the Trick Room up as a priority, go for that and then be an offensive outlet going forward. I think the Tornadus needs to be careful now because you don't want to lock in with a Tailwind, but you do have access to the Taunt. And with the Covert Clock, you can avoid any fake out disruption here from the Incineroar and go for that straight down into the Porygon. Does Eric read into that and just go for an attack here? Maybe Terrasilize. Try and get rid of that Tornadus first before you actually commit to going for that Trick Room, which would put you in an advantage situation later on in this game. But if you don't Terrasilize, you leave yourself open to getting attacked by that Single Strike Urshifu, and you really don't want to be taking a close combat at this stage of the game. But unlike the Tornadus, it is susceptible to the fake out pressure, which we are going to see, Charlie. That's exactly what connects down into the Urshifu, breaking the focus Taunt coming out onto the Porygon 2 is not holding a Mental Herb. If it's going for a Trick Room, then it won't be able to set that up this turn. But no, it's just going to be the Ice Beam shutting down any further taunts coming into the Tornadus with super effective damage. And i got to call out that that Urshifu on Mark's side is that Stellar Terror type. Yeah, that's a great Stellar type. You know, Terrestrialization option to have at your disposal there. But you really, to get take advantage of it, you're going to have to, you know, get it in a position where... The, the poison, you maybe want to wait to see what Eric commits to, if he's going to commit to a terrestrialization earlier on in this in this battle, because I think if we do see the poison terror type come out from maybe something like the Porygon 2, because, you know, you are really threatened at this stage from the Urshifu on both the Porygon 2 and the Incineroar, so which one do you switch? Which one do you leave in? Which one do you not terrestrialize? It is a big question, and maybe that's something that Mark wants to not commit into too early in this game and wait to see how things play out. You've got the taunt off onto the Porygon 2. Tornadus has done its job. Do you leave it in? just get some damage off now or do you switch it out? Well, we saw Mark hovering over that Terra Stellar button that decided not to click it this turn. Tornado's going to protect in the face of Amoongus coming in pretty safely here as Close Combat does connect down into Porygon 2, deciding that the Terra Stellar would have been a bit of a risk given it has that Poison Terra type. Urshifu softening itself up, getting dropped to its defenses. This is exactly what we were talking about. Normal Terra Blast with that download special attack boost and that Urshifu is down. A huge, huge knockout here and a really good read from Eric into that Urshifu to pick up the knockout. You can see how important that Intimidate was on the Urshifu just to reduce the attack power of that move. Porygon taking that so yeah. well, not even needing to commit to the, a, a terrestrialization here to resist that. Taking it so well, cannot recover though at this stage, is in a bit of a precarious position where it, you know, it is getting lower on health and you want to be able to, to get that recover. Can Amoongus go for a Pollen Puff, though? Because it is an option that you do have. You can go for that side heal. But if we do see the Tornado switch out for the Tatsugiri, then we're going to be in a little bit of a different board position because the Dondoza could potentially put enough damage onto that Porygon 2 with those boosts to pick up the knockout. What's nice in this situation is that Dondozo is naturally quite a slow Pokemon, so it could operate outside of the Tatsugiri combination, getting big damage off in Trick Room. But it is going to be Tatsugiri joining the field and hopping into to Don Dozo's mouth. Don Dozo is certainly going to appreciate getting that rejuvenation from the Tatsugiri hopping into his mouth, getting a boost to all of its stats. So Mark really indexing heavily on this. If that Porygon sets up Trick Room, then Don Dozo will certainly be moving last in that situation because it's got that double speed boost now. Porygon 2 is in fact just going to retreat for now. Here comes Incineroar onto the field, dropping down a key Intimidate onto Don Dozo. Yeah. Yeah, and it is really in a, a, a bit of an awkward position here because the Amoongus can go for a spoil this turn into that Dondozo, suspecting maybe that the Tutsuguri is going to come in and get those boosts. But saying that, we are going to see the counterplay to that, protecting itself with that Grass Terrestrialization, and it is going to make sure that Spore is not an issue anymore. Yeah, Grass-type is going to keep itself safe from a Spore, but Amoongus instead just going to go for a Protect on this turn. Here's a big Wave Crash. It's going to be super effective into the Incineroar with an Intimidate. Oh. 
great draw. Incineroar is able to hang on. <laughs> Just look at how clutch that Pokemon is and why it's such a king of VG. That is a huge survival there. Really shows off the training that Eric's put into this Incineroar. Able to come in, drop an important Intimidate onto this big physical threat in Dondozo. Coming now with that fake out support. It's going to be able to at least stall out a turn here and it give a, maybe a Moongus the opportunity to go for that Pollen Puff into the Incineroar, get some health back. But we're not going to see that. We're going to see the Intimidate prioritize kept for later. Keep it in the back to maybe drop again a more preferable point. What if it's the Pollen Puff coming onto this newly switched in Porygon 2 though for a little bit more longevity? It's going to have to take an order up first. Porygon 2 taking that like an absolute champion, but of course Dondozo will be taking that attack boost after using that move. There's the Pollen Puff. Porygon 2 healing up nicely there, and you've switched out. You've reset the taunt so you can more safely set up that trick room. Yeah, and I think you're in a nice position now, even with that order up. It's just kind of nullified that intimidate drop that you took from the Incineroar. It's a really nice way to do that, but we've seen the damage from the Dondozo so far. It wasn't able to pick up the knockout on the Incineroar after the Intimidate, so very unlikely that it's got anything in its arsenal to be able to take down the Porygon 2, kind of freeing up that Pokemon to get the trick room up, switch the dimensions, put that Amoongus in a really dangerous place going forward to not only kind of throw Pollen Puffs out onto the Dondozo, but also kind of keep the Porygon 2 topped up. After we've seen it get that special attack boost, it's going to be hitting a little bit harder going forward in this game. Right, it's going to be order up connecting into the Amoongus here, getting another boost to the, to the physical attack, I believe. That is three boosts now, given the Intimidate earlier on. That's a super effective Pollen Puff and you can see how that damage could rack up even though Pollen Puff is not the heaviest damaging move. And there is Porygon 2 twisting those dimensions, feeling a little bit more at home in an altered virtual reality environment. <laughs> I love that. For five turns only, we have this switch up where the Porygon 2 and the Amoongus are going to be the fastest things on the field. And you would say now that the Incineroar might be something that you can drop in at any point just to keep that Dondozo in check, really. But I think a big thing that you're going to do, and we are seeing the Porygon 4 go for here is that terrestrialization because it does put you at a bit of a worse position if the earthquake comes out but you are at an advantage position if you are going for that terror blast well is that going to be the move of choice after this pollen puff connects down and there it is there's the poison type terror blast it's now super effective against this grass type don dozo there comes that liquid ooze oh. and the don dozo hangs on with just 14 hp those special defense boosts really paying dividends there getting another order up off and another boost to its attack but that don dozo hanging on by a sliver yeah, but this is the problem now. I think Mark in a really awkward position where a Pollen Puff onto the Dondos is probably enough to pick it up and then you can go for the Terra Blast into the Tatsuguri that's going to come out this turn. So not opting to do that though. Eric wanting to activate that Regenerator ability, utilize that Intimidate, get it onto the field, just mitigate those order up because at the moment the Dondozo is getting a little bit carried away even though the Terra Blast is keeping it in check and uh, setting up the, the fake out for the next turn where you can and take advantage of that to really utilize that Porygon 2 going forward. Right, and that's going to be Don Dozo down and out. It was lucky to survive on the HP it had after that previous turn. So unsurprising to see that Tatsugiri rejoin the field now. And look at that, just a very low health Tornadus in the back. The Incineroar, one HP, infinitely more than zero, able to come back in and throw down and intimidate. It's put in an absolute shift this game. It's looking very tired right now, but it's still kicking around. Yeah, and it's still got access to that fake out if it wants or it can go for a flare blitz just to get some damage maybe pick up the knockout into the tornadoes and then take advantage of the porygon 2 with that special attack boost go for some big attacks into that tasagiri you've got two turns of trick room to really take advantage of and you don't feel like the tasagiri's got anything that's going to be detrimental to the porygon going forward especially with it having access to that recover you have got the ability to taunt it this turn which might be quite good but you've got to be aware that the that you are going to lose it and i I think a last ditch attempt from the Tornadus is probably a good play to go for that taunt into the Porygon to limit what it's able to do for the rest of this game. Well, it's going to be a Terror Blast coming out onto the Tornadus, so no taunt will be coming out right now. That is that Pokemon down and out. It's just this Life Orb Tatsugiri on the field. At least it's not Choice Scarf in the Trick Room environment, but of course, any attack it dishes out will be giving a little bit of chip damage as well. Parting Shot connecting down, making sure that any damage coming out from this Tatsugiri is somewhat limited 
coming back to Eric in favor of a Pokemon in the back. And I mean, this is the Eric Rios way, isn't it? Having all four Pokemon remaining, just whittling away at the opponent as Amoongus rejoins the field. Yeah, not wanting to overextend himself in any way, not wanting to take any risks, making sure that he keeps his Pokemon preserved until the very last moment. We are seeing a Muddy Water come out here from the Tasiguri, taking a little bit of chip from that life orb. But you've got to say, I think Mark, at this stage, things not looking good for him in this first game, but utilize this time that you've got to really... Um, regather your thoughts. Think about that game too. How are you going to approach this game? Because it hasn't quite worked out how he probably planned it to in this one where Eric's had quite a dominating performance here and really showcasing again the Porygon 2 being a bit of the star of the show. Yeah, it really is. And uh, again, another classic Eric Rios play there. Going for the recover, even though Tatsugiri is asleep, just leaving absolutely nothing to chance right here. <laughs> one very slim wing con that we could have seen previously. Multiple muddy water accuracy drops. <laughs> this is going out from Eric's side of the field. That is a one-turn wake on Tatsugiri, going for the Dragon Balls into the Amoongus, but now both of these Pokemon are free to attack into this delightful little bit of sushi. Here comes the Poison-type Terra Blast connecting down into Tatsugiri. How much is it going to do? It's going to be down Tatsugiri very low indeed, and a Pollen Path hopefully will finish up the job. There it is. Tatsugiri is down and out, so Eric Rios keeping all four Pokemon in his arsenal and claiming game one. Yeah, a great performance here from Eric. Very similar to the dominant performance that we saw from Alex earlier on with this exact six. Really showcasing his skill as a player, making it very difficult for Mark to get a foothold in that game and maybe giving Mark some things to think about coming into game two. I think in particular, you're going to have to look at something like that Glamora as an option to really help you out in this match. The only problem is if Eric reads into that and switches up what he's brought and we didn't ever get that reveal of the fourth Pokemon for Eric, yeah, yeah, which yeah, makes yeah. it even more difficult for Mark to say, mm, the Glamora might be better here because it would resist the Terra Blast from that Porygon 2, whether or not it terrestrializes or not. It's not really going to have to worry so much about the Ice Beam. It's decently defensive built on the special defensive side of things. So that is a Pokemon that you could use. It's going to really threaten the Incineroar as well with that uh, access to the Meteor Beam that it has. Potentially picking up a knockout against that Pokemon. And it doesn't do too bad against things like the Amoongus once you've got that special attack boost as well. So you can really start to put pressure on from an offensive side of things from that Pokemon alone. But like I say, if you see the Coma all come in, if you see the Ting Lu as an option that Eric is leaning on, things get a bit more difficult. Right, and you've got to assume that in that previous game, the fourth Pokemon that Eric had in the back unrevealed, it would have been a more offensive threat, Fluttermane, Komoo, or Ting Lu. But he didn't even need to bring it out, and that is what pivoting around can achieve for you as we get into game two. It's going to be a run back of Eric's lead with Porygon 2 and Incineroar, and there it is, Lee. There's that Glimora and the Tornadus joining the field. Yeah, and I really like this switch up here from Mark bringing the Glimora, like we've said, for the right reasons. It's putting instant pressure onto that Incineroar here. You know, the Incineroar is not going to go for the fake out into the Tornadus because of that cover clock, but the positioning of the Tornadus is really nice, where you can potentially go for the taunt into the Porygon 2. Now, does Mark read into this and think, oh, Porygon 2 is going to go for an Ice Beam here. I've got a, I've got a decent switch to something in the back, maybe switch something in, give you a little bit of room, keep that Tornadus around for later on, where it might have a bit more use than it is now. But then if you take it off the field, the problem is you don't have access to that taunt anymore, and you leave the Porygon 2 kind of able to do what it wants, which is exactly what you want to try and avoid. Void. The Glamora is a bit of a sitting target here for the fake out because it hasn't got access to that Clover Coke. So at least for this turn, I think you probably have to commit to going for the Taunt into the P2, take the Ice Beam and then maybe go for the Protect with the Glamora or just try your luck and try and get a, uh, a big Meteor Beam off. Well, let's see if your future sight is accurate here, Lee, as Ting Lu joins the field. Bleak Wind Storm coming out with a double connect from the Tornadus onto both of Eric's Pokemon. Nice little bit of chip damage. Porygon 2 will appreciate that speed drop if it is indeed setting up the trick room. Here comes Meteor Beam. You get the rise to your special attack. It's a little bit stressful because this move might miss, but fingers crossed for Mark <laughs> that the Meteor Beam connects here. Power Herb enabling it to hit in one go rather than two, and it does connect. There's the Meteor Beam into Porygon 2. I am constantly impressed by how bulky Porygon 2 can be with this EV Light. There's the Ice Beam. No freeze. Yeah, and that switch into Tinglu really helpful for the Porygon 2 here. Able to take almost shrug off that bleak wind storm from the Tornadus. It yeah. didn't opt to go for the taunt here, which is fine because it's still on the field. It can go for it this turn. There isn't any threat to it from a fake out or anything potentially able to prioritize knock it out. So it can freely go for that here. And the Glamora is in a good position. It is 
is going to be able to do some big damage to the Porygon too, but you've got to worry about that Ting Lu where it is going to be able to pressure you with something like that Stomping Tantrum that can pick up a knockout because you have already revealed your item. You don't have a Focus Sash. You will get picked up here unless you go and commit to the Terrestrialization on that Pokemon, which might be a little bit too early, but is it the right call to go for here? Well, right now, not risking the Terrestrialization. Ting Lu dodging the Bleak and Storm with that Porygon too, getting nicely chipped there. Does have access to recover. Will it be able to oh. go for it? No, it won't because Sludge Bomb, enough to pick up the knockout. The Pokemon that was so pesky to mark in that previous game, but this is a doubly super effective stomping tantrum. Connecting down into the Glamora, and that Pokemon is down and out as well in a one-hit knockout, but with the toxic debris being scattered around on Eric's side of the field. Yeah, that is a big, because anything coming onto the field now, what Eric likes to do as well is change up his board position quite frequently. If you're coming in, you're going to get poisoned, and that is going to start the kind of tick down on your side of the field, making it very difficult. I really like how Mark's kind of approach this game, but the one thing that you would say to bring in, to get rid of those, <laughs> is the Among Us. Yeah, there it is on the field, soaking up those toxic spikes. Now, we had a really interesting preview there, because Mark does not have Don Dozo in the back, even though he's got that Tatsugiri out on the field. Perhaps trying to bait Eric into making certain plays, expecting the Don Dozo in the back. Yeah, I, I think that can play to his advantage here because you, you would expect every time you see the Tatsuguri that the Dondozo is going to be there, but mm. it's not like we know. So it'll be interesting to see how Eric reacts in this position. I think the fact that he's got the Ting Lu and the Amoongus out, though, are two very strong defensive Pokemon that are going to be hard to take down. It's going to be very difficult to remove them from the field, especially with that Vessel of Ruin ability intact. Um, it feels still like an uphill battle, even after taking down that Porygon too. Right, and this Tong Ting Lu does not have access to any Rock-type moves, so that Tornado is perhaps slightly safer than it might have been. Here comes the Muddy Water. Amoongus is protected from it. Super effective into Ting Lu, but even with this Vessel of Ruin active on the field, that's a lot of damage thanks to the Life Orb. That's a heavy slam into the Tornado. Wisely protected there. Yeah, it's a really smart protect there from Mark, in particular from the Tornado, because it's not really the most obvious thing where you're thinking, well, just get some extra damage off onto the Ting Lu, onto the Among Us with the Bleak Wind Storm. We're really taking advantage of that protect in this situation to allow you to get a, a potential Muddy Water off and then get that accuracy drop that you're kind of fishing for because it will give you an advantage going forward in the game. Fortunately, that Bleak Wind Storm just yeah. not connecting. Yeah, that Bleak Wind Storm is a double miss onto Eric's side of the field. Really unfortunate for Mark. And fishing is certainly something that uh, Tazugiri enjoys doing. It's going to be Ting Lu dodging that, so I don't know if there's some kind of fog on the field right now, <laughs> but these Pokemon not being that accurate with their moves. Here's Heavy Slam on Tornadoes with the knockout. Yeah, and that's really unfortunate for Mark, because he's doing everything in his power to try and whittle down the options on Eric's side of the field, doing it very well. Unfortunately, just not connecting with the moves that he's actually clicking into. Pollen Puff here coming out and further detriment to Mark, topping up that health <laughs> that the Ting Lu's taken already, making it even more difficult to get rid of. But we are seeing the single strike Urshifu come onto the field, and that is a Pokemon that Mark can really utilize to get some big damage off. The only problem is that Amoongus that has got Rage Powder, it is going to be able to detract those moves. And also the Terrestrialization on the Ting Lu. It can go for that Poison Terrestrialization, take away that weakness to those fighting type attacks. Ting Lu not even breaking a sweat here, getting that health recovery thanks to Pollen Puff, just chucking out this damage like it's nothing. It's Urshifu and Tatsugiri on the field. I mean, Urshifu is a great Pokemon to have in the back right now. It's able to threaten super effective damage onto the Ting Lu, and just as a late game sweeper, could prove crucial for Mark, but it will be Incineroar joining the field to drop the attack onto, crucially, that single strike style Urshifu. Tatsugiri not going to mind that too much. It's Terra Time Trainers. The Terrestrialization is going to come out. One of these Pokemon I'm going to be getting very sparkly indeed because it will be that Terra Stella onto the Urshifu single strike. You'll love to see it. Something you don't see so often in VG. So we relish the opportunity right now. It's going to give a one time boost to any of the moves that Urshifu chooses in this instance. But it's going to be a responding Terra on the Ting Lu going for that poison type. That vessel on its head overflowing with gunk ready to uh, absorb <laughs> any fighting type moves that Urshifu could be going for. But this is a close combat, boosted by that Terrastella into the Incineroar, and it's enough for the one-hit knockout. Such a bulky Pokemon, down and out already. That is a great call from Mark there, into what was the Amoongus, predicting the Incineroar to come in and really taking advantage of it, getting rid of a pivotal Pokemon 
for Eric in this match. We do see it followed up by a Dragon Pulse, but not quite enough as the Tatsugiri takes a little bit of chip damage. In response, we're going to see a Stomping Tantrum, not quite enough, but working its way down though with the Tatsugiri. Hasn't got many turns left, and we're going to see that Amoongus hit the field once again. It is going to pressure with the Spore into both of these Pokemon now on Mark's side of the field. Obviously, the close combat, a bit of a detriment there because it has dropped its defenses, so it is going to be a little bit easier to deal with, but it does have that Focus Sash intact and is going to be able to rely on that as soon as that you know, that is broken, then it becomes a little bit more of a safe target. What's nice about this is that you've used the close combat Terra Stellar boost, but neither of these Pokemon on Eric's side of the field would be likely to be taking that anyway. You're more likely to lock into a dart type move with Urshifu now, so that one time boost could pay dividends going into a later turn. For now, it's just going to be Tatsugiri and Urshifu keeping themselves safe over on Mark's side of the field. That's a stomping tantrum connecting down into the Tatsugiri and uh, Moongus left free to do what it wants right now, going for that Spore onto Urshifu just to try and shut that Pokemon down. But this coming turn, Lee, is going to be crucial. Yeah, it really is. I think you have to lock into maybe a Draco Meteor like we're seeing here. Double into that Amoongus, take away the option for that Spore because if you can remove the Amoongus this turn, the double up into it, like you say, the Wicked Blow hasn't taken the boost from the, the Stellar Terra typing yet. So there's going to be increased damage along with that Draco Meteor. You know your Pokemon if your Mark are faster than anything on Eric's side of the field. So so you're going to be able to get those attacks off. Can you pick up the knockout into the Amoongus? Well, here we go, Urshifu. Let's find out if you can. This is going to be a Terra Stellar boosted Wicked Blow into the Amoongus with the critical hit, of course. Amoongus down to about a quarter of his health and a follow-up Draco Meteor. It connects. Is it going to pick up the knockout? Yes, it is. Thanks to that Life Orb. It's just Ting Lu on the field. It's got a very full health bar, though, Lee. Yeah, it definitely has. And this is going to be very tricky for Mark to take down the Tatsugiri just hanging on there from that oh. Life Orb damage as the Stomping Tantrum comes out and picks up in return a knockout on that, leaving the Urshifu versus the Tinglu in a showdown of two behemoths. A big problem, though, for Mark is that that Focus Sash was broken, yeah. attacking and committing into the Amoongus, where the Rocky Helmet yeah. was able to chip that, making things a little bit easier for that Tinglu going forward in this match. And the thing is that with Wicked Blow, you always crit, so you never crit sort of thing. It's not going to have any additional damage output against this Tinglu. We know what it's going to do, and this yeah, I mean, just look at how Tinglu was able to sponge that up. There's a the stomping tantrum into the Urshifu. It's able to hang on. Of course, it's an assault vest on the Tinglu. So it seems like this Wicked Blow just isn't going to be able to do enough in this situation. But time to dot the I's and cross the T's. Wicked Blow coming in. It's oh! got the critical hit. And the critical hit, of course, is guaranteed. But on this particular roll, it's going to be enough to pick up the knockout onto the Tinglu. Mark playing to his house. We're going to a game three. That was a phenomenal end to the match. <laughs> not what I was expecting after that initial Wicked Blow. You think it's probably yeah. not going to be enough to pick up. Eric's done everything right up until that point, but you've got to take your hat off to Mark. How phenomenally he played that, the adjustments he made with the Glamora, and then not bringing the Dondoza to this match, just bringing that Tatsuguri, putting a bit of a question in Eric's mind to what Eric uh, Mark is up to, and then really utilizing his tools to the fullest extent. Protecting with the Tornado is a key turns to really make sure that he's getting the maximum damage that he can throughout this match, which really came in so clutch at the end there. That could not have been closer, those margins. The Tinglu could well have hung on by a thread, and that's all it would have needed to deal that stomping tantrum in return. This is what we mean when we say that 1 HP is so infinitely more than 0 HP. Tinglu down and out, leaving that Urshifu remaining on the field. And so fantastic to see the new Terra Stella type being so crucial in that game. Yeah, exactly. I think the big turning point, though, was when early on, when Mark really went after that Porygon 2, right? Mm. And took it down, and you think, hmm don't have access to the real impactful Pokemon that you had in that game on, Eric. Are you going to be able to kind of turn this around? And it felt like for a time he was able to manage things, but the call with the close combat into mm. the Amoongus, when it switched into the Incineroar, you've got to say that is another turning point. So Mark makes some really brave calls in that match and capitalize off them, taking it right down to the moment where, you, like you say, the Stellar Terra type came out and really proved to be the deciding factor in that last match. Well, speaking of deciding 
let's get into this deciding game. Eric giving a run back of Incineroar and Porygon 2. It's going to be that Tornadus and Glimora once again for Mark. So both trainers going for the leads that have worked for them so far in this three-game set. Porygon 2 getting a boost once more to a special attack. Yeah, and the mind games really start to work yeah. here because if you are, Eric, do you go for the trick room here expecting Mark to think you're not going to go for the trick room, but you are <laughs> going to go for the trick room? And do you go for the taunt? It's really difficult to make a call. If you get it right, of course, you can really take advantage of the situation because Porygon, the rest of Eric's team essentially love the trick room environment. Or do you just go for that ice beam into the tornadoes? We're not going to see anything from the, the Incineroar here. It's just going to switch straight out. Ting Lu come onto the field and get that Vessel of Rune ability active, making things a little bit better for that Porygon too. Yeah, Ting Lu, fantastic Pokemon to bring in here. All special attackers over on Mark's side of the field, but of course, producing the damage output of the Porygon too as well. Oh, goodness, here we go. It's another Meteor Beam. A special attack boost for this Glamora. Let's hope that it's wearing its spectacles, able to connect into Porygon 2. Yes, it is. There's that Meteor Beam connecting down. Ting Lu, of course, reducing the damage output. Porygon 2 taking just shy of 50% to its health there. Ice Beam connecting down into the Tornadus, and it does not get a freeze, thankfully, for Mark. Yeah, that's, a, that's one thing that you would really worry about in that situation. The freeze would be a real detriment to you. The big thing is, though, that Mark's got that torn off into the Porygon, so it's not going to be yeah. able to recover any of this damage off, so you can try and double into it here. Problem is, Ting Lu's really kind of holding you back a bit, as well as the damage output that you can do with your Porygon. You can see the damage difference from the Tornadus here. It's got a little bit more health than it would normally. Still in range from a Heavy Slam, but I think with the Ting Lu on the field now with Eric, you've really got to prioritize getting rid of that Grimora as soon as possible, not waste any turns going after that Tornadus at the moment. Well, if there's one thing Ting Lu can do, it's get rid of a Glamora as soon as possible. That's the Sludge Bomb, and it gets the poison Ooh. onto Porygon 2. That is going to rack up. Of course, Eric has option, has access to the Recover on that Porygon, so timing that will be crucial. Of course, that's going to be a one-hit knockout onto the Glamora. Stomping Tantrum being doubly super effective. One layer of Toxic Debris set up, but if that Amoongus is lurking in the back, which we would expect, then it would be able to just sponge that up like it did in Game 2. Here comes that Ice Beam uh, into the Protected Tornado, so able to stick around for at least one more turn. Yeah, and I think if you are Eric at this stage, you really want to try and get that Porygon 2 off the field. Yeah. Potentially, you've got to make a decision. Do you switch it out for the Amoongus? Get rid of the, the toxic debris, the spikes on the field at the moment. It does make it a bit obvious for a Bleak Wind Storm to come out, but then you do have access to Terrastalizing, maybe take away those weaknesses to what we've seen come in on the field now, and that Urshifu, take away the, the close combat weakness with your Poison Terrastalization, go for the Heavy Slam into the Tornadus, and remove that Taunt, and try and weave the Porygon 2 back into a position, maybe, where you've got it next to the Incineroar, and you can get that Fake Off off to maybe get the Trick Room, and then get a Recover under your, your, your belt to kind of get it in a nicer position than it is right now. It's going to be dicey for this Porygon 2. It looks like it might not even be able to survive one more tick of poison, but going to be close margins for sure. Urshifu joining the field right now, threatening super effective damage onto the Tinglu should it choose to go for that, but it will be Porygon 2 switching out so that that poison does not pick up the knockout at the end of the turn. Here comes Incineroar to reduce the damage output of this single strike style Urshifu. That Incineroar will be poisoned for the rest of the game now. Intimidate activating now onto Urshifu. It's going to be mitigating the damage output from that Pokemon, even though it looks like we're going to be going for another stellar terrestrialization onto that single strike style Urshifu, harnessing the power of all of the types, getting that one time boost to any offensive move that it has, depending on the type it locks into. It's a double connect for Bleak Wind Storm, a little bit of chip damage. Is there going to be a speed drop into either of the Pokemon? Not this time. Wicked Blow, though, is going to be resisted by either of the Pokemon on Eric's side of the field. Still, really good damage damage, though, on the Incineroar. Yeah, really good damage. You look at that and you think that is a resisted hit, and that's still doing nearly 30% damage, really, from um, the, the Urshifu there. Nice switch, though, from Eric. You think, mm, I don't really want to switch the Incineroar in here because it is going to get poisoned, but I think you take the sacrifice to be able to kind of preserve maybe the Amoongus that you've got possibly lurking in the back, mm. right? Because you don't want to bring it in on potentially a Wicked Blow and a Bleak Wind Storm. It could play a real pivotal role in the end of this game. And I think it's a really good decision from Eric to get this Incineroar in. It soaks up that Wicked Blow. Wicked Blow now not going to be boosted by that Stellar Terror type. It has been used. You've got access to the Fake Out as well, so you can shut down anything from the Urshifu, which has got that Focus Sash. Yeah. You really want to be breaking that if you can. And you can shut down this category while you've still got intact your Terrestrialization. It is an option for you 
going forward in this game. The good news for Mark is that that Urshifu still has access to a boosted fighting type move with its Terra Stella, which could be huge onto the Tinglu. Of course, Tinglu does have access to the Poison Terra type, and that is a mechanic that Eric still has up his sleeve. Going down to the wire with our move choices here, going to be Tinglu withdrawing right back to Eric, and here comes that Amoongus to sponge up those toxic spikes. Won't be taking poison damage, of course, being a poison type Pokemon. How's it going to do against what Urshifu's going for? Well, it's fake out, first of all, into that Tatsugiri. Wicked blow into the Amoongus. Critical hit, but look at that with the Intimidate paying dividends. Yeah, and then there's that Rocky Helmet yeah. damage as well. So important to break that Focus Sash and really make that Urshifu a little bit more vulnerable in this end game here. The Tatsugiri obviously not being able to move there this turn. It is going to be active here. It is going to have a free knockout onto the Incineroar. It's pretty easy for you to click maybe the Muddy Water and the Wicked Blow here into that Amoongus. Is it enough, though, to pick the knockup out? And do you leave the Incineroar alone, or do you double into that slot like we saw Mark prioritize in that game, too? Well, for now, it's going to be Porygon to rejoin in the field. It's very low health indeed, and it is poisoned. It's getting that boost to its special attack, at least. But a Wicked Blow is just going to remove it from the field. Anyway, Eric perhaps realizing that he just needed, unfortunately, a Pokemon to sacrifice in this situation. And it's Pokemon that's worked so well for him in game one. Fair enough. Muddy Water, single target now, super effective into the Incineroar. So so low as well. So just like that, Eric brought down to the final two Pokemon in Tinglu and Amoongus. Yeah, two versus two. And I think quite a smart play there from Eric where he was able to get the Amoongus off the field and utilize that regenerator ability to get some of that health back. It's going to be so important in the latter stages of this match because now with it and the Tinglu on the field, it does free up the Tinglu to potentially go for that terrestrialization and start getting some damage out. Really important damage because you're going to have to get rid of essentially the Urshifu as soon as possible. You've got active Spore as well, so you can go for that. You can disrupt with the Amoongus uh, on, on Mark's side of the field with that move, but are you able to get it off? That's a big question. Well, Wicked Blow is certainly going to go off into the Amoongus, and it's a lot of damage there. Taking more Rocky Helmet chip. Draco Meteor connecting down into the Amoongus. That's going to be enough for the knockout as well. We're facing a very similar endgame that we had in Game 2 trainers in this fantastic thriller between Mark Segi and Eric Rios. Tatsugiri losing a bit of health to that life orb chip as well. Stomping Tantrum is going to be not just enough to pick up the knockout onto Tatsugiri. Hanging on, of course, holding that assault vest not so offensively built. And this Ting Lu, it still has the terrestrialization option available. The mind games here of will Eric go for it? Yeah, and that's the problem. You, you know, I think we, look, we see what Mark's locking into here, potentially. Um, but if Eric decides to pull the trigger on that terrestrialization here, it's not going to be very effective. And knowing that Mark still has access to that boosted attack. Maybe that's something going through Eric's mind now. Also, you do kind of take away the weakness that you've got with that ground type to those muddy waters. That the Tatsugiri is going to be able to fire out. You've got to kind of prioritize getting rid of that Pokemon as well because it's probably just out of range of the life orb recoil. But we are seeing no terrestrialization and a close combat yet close into combat. the Tinglu. Oh, look at that Tinglu brought down so low. Mark has been playing this absolutely fantastically. Now, is this Tatsugiri going to connect with the muddy water? Yes, it is. And Mark Segi has done it versus the Bayomoth that is Eric Rios. Eric goes six and one. Mark goes seven and oh. Congratulations, Mark Segi. What an incredible turnaround from what looked like a real hard, you know, uphill battle in that game two. 